This is World Inside, and I'm Tian Wei. Margaret Chan, the former Director General of the World Health Organization, was the first Chinese to hold that position on the sidelines of China's two sessions. I asked her about her insights into China's public health system. As someone who has invested her career in improving public health, she said China has matured a lot since the SARS outbreak in the year 2003 and has since learned many lessons which should be shared with other countries. She said that China now is one of the best countries in preventing and containing infectious diseases. What a transformation that you have made from the Director General of the World Health Organization now to a CPPCC member. How do you see your transformation so far? I agree with you. It is a very, very interesting transformation. Yes, indeed. As uh, the Director General of the World Health Organization, in the past 10 years, uh, I can see my experience there, uh, you know, in terms of facilitating uh, member countries. I have 194 member states uh, as bosses mm -hmm. and uh, facilitating their engagement in negotiation uh, to support them to arrive at consensus, uh, that's my, one of my major role. And of course, uh, as a technical officer, uh, you know, involved in the supporting countries, mm -hmm. giving them advice and technical support in improving the health of their people. So those two experiences as a facilitator, coordinator, as well as a technical uh, administrator, uh, I think those two experiences are very valuable uh, for me as a member of the CPPCC. Beginning from that UN General Assembly back in 2015. Right. Chinese President Xi with the administration that he is leading is becoming ever more visible on the international stage because you personally interact with him and his team. The styles that he has and also the way he and his colleagues are trying to push forward the agenda. What would you say? Uh, well, it is uh, presumptuous of me to give an assessment on the presidency. Well, you work with him. Yes, indeed. I met him uh, quite a number of times, and I work with him and his team in healthcare reform, and also I watch closely uh, the poverty alleviation in China. I have to say, he's a leader. Not only is he visionary, he is courageous, mm -hmm and he is committed to serving the people of China. And he's a leader that walks his talk. Political leaders worldwide, they make a lot of promises. That we know. And he's one of the very few political leaders that honor his promises. Dr. Chen, another person you work very closely with on the issue related to China and the world. Can I say from China is Professor Peng, Professor Peng Liyuan who has been a very outspoken person regards to the healthcare issue, particularly to AIDS, HIV AIDS. That, of course, is another human rights issue as well. That's true. So how do you see um, the growing influence of Professor Peng in terms of making sure the issues that you are pushing together are already coming to quite a successful stage? Well, Tenway, I still remember uh, we, we together uh, worked with Madam Peng on the AIDS issue. Absolutely. In fact, you know, talking about uh, the very active contribution of Madam Peng, I have to say, she was, you know, actually working on HIV AIDS long before she became the first lady of China. And she continued to play an active role after she became first lady. Professor Pong, always very pr low profile. Yes, indeed. When you say thank you for your contribution, I personally heard that you said to her, and she said, that's all I should do. That's all I should do. And uh, to have a beautiful, gracious, and humble first lady, I think 
uh, that wins her a lot of respect uh, from the uh, country, from the pe Chinese people in China. And that's why they give her a nickname, I, 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 I heard. <laughs> and they even have a song uh, about uh, her and, and, and also President Xi. Xi Dai Dai, Hai Yo Zhe Peng Ma Ma, Azima. That is a, a nice way uh, to show people's respect for President Xi and for Madam Peng. We know China is a country of 1.4 billion. So medical services, extremely important but limited resources as a result of historical reasons. When you have people all want to squeeze into the best hospitals in China coming from all over the country, you see a crisis going on every day in the hospital. There is still a lack of ways to change in real essence this picture. In fact, China has started work in promoting the training of family physicians, family doctor, or in Chinese they call it Chen Ke Yi Sheng. Without sufficient number of family physicians, basing community, serving the community, serving the village, you will continue to see many, many people going to big hospitals with minor problems. So this is a big issue that China is addressing. And of course, you know, China is a vast country and the unbalanced development is seen most acutely at the village level. How can we, number one, give family medicine doctor the right respect and right status and right salary to encourage young people to go into that uh, you know, uh, discipline mm -hmm. and serve the vast majority of the people mm -hmm. is extremely important. Mm -hmm. But I this would take a long time, Dr. Chen. It would take a lot of time. Will people have that patience for that waiting list? Health is the business of everybody, not just the government. So on an individual level, family level, community level, and the government as well as the industry. We all must play our part to support the government. As I said, just looking at the health care financing and the health care coverage based on primary health care mm -hmm. in the last, what, 10 years? That's right. It has gone from very low coverage to over 95%. So I have to say, the health care reform in China is unprecedented, its achievement is recognized by world leaders in health care, and I wish that you know, they do understand there are big challenges, there are difficult issues that they need to continue to work on. And as a Chinese now, and, uh, I've been asked uh, to continue to provide advice to the government uh, in health care reform. It is indeed. Uh, I look forward to working with my uh, fellow colleagues, uh, both in Hong Kong yes. as well as in the mainland, and to s improve the health of people. Right, right. Before we go, Dr. Chan, I do have a question. Long willing to ask you. On the one hand, you are a very strong leader when you are working for WHO and some of the other entities. On the other hand, you are a very loving person. <laughs> Even love dancing Xinjiang dances, <laughs> the Uyghur dance. I saw you many times. And your colleagues love you. How to combine all of these roles together at any time? That is uh, one magic you have when it comes to leadership. Dr. Chen. Tin Wei, doesn't matter what job you are t holding, Whatever you are doing, there will be pressures, there will be stress, there is commitment. As long as you are clear on what you should be doing, what are your priorities, you just keep going at it. And do not be distracted by noises or by people's criticism. We need to listen to constructive criticism, 
but there are far too many noises now. So remaining focused, find a good way to distress and enjoy life and enjoy, you know, working with people. All right. I guess I'll, from now on, try to learn some Xinjiang dance from you, Dr. <laughs> Chen. <laughs> but what a pleasure seeing you once again, Dr. Chen. It's nice to see you again. All the best. Well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is our conversation with Dr. Margaret Chen, the former Director General of the World Health Organization, a fun lady as well. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Sina Weibo. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for insights across China and around the world. Time for a weekend break. Have a great one, everyone.